Hello and welcome back and that is right today I want to talk about this the TVS H874 probably the most powerful desktop NAS I have ever had here in the studio with hardware architecture that I've just not found elsewhere and although I've done an enormous and I really do mean enormous it was like an hour long uh, review of this NAS I think we need to do a short form version so today I'm going to do a should you buy today I'm going to give you five reasons why you might want to consider buying the new TVS H874 for your home business or multimedia storage needs and five reasons why you might want to sit on the fence because it might not quite be suitable for you so let's crack on with number one that processor of course the very fact that this arrives with a 12th gen intel core processor means so 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 very much this system again this is the 8 bay arrives with either an i5 an i7 or an i9 processor with a ridiculous number of cores and a ridiculous number of threads but and more importantly a, a tremendous architecture that can be bespoke across the rest of the system that is just not possible elsewhere now i could spend ages talking about that and I probably will in the other points but the reason I'm highlighting the CPU inside this isn't just because it's 12th gen and therefore it's so close to being the most recent release I think 13th gen arrived in like late spring early summer 2022 um, but with regards to this system in particular we are seeing so many business class or prosumer higher end systems arriving in desktop form NAS and even rack mount where they have kind of given the old elbow to Intel. Now Intel themselves have, you know, they're slowly phasing out the Pentium and the Celeron branding and they're giving it its own ugly model ID. But even then the Intel core series we are seeing in fewer and fewer and fewer NAS systems with most NAS brands erring towards server grade Xeons. And for a number of us that take advantage of processes and services and applications on our network attached storage devices that can benefit from embedded graphics and integrated graphics I should say Intel Core has always been the de facto king of the hill when it comes to integrated graphics processors and the fact that not only have QNAP deigned to put this latest generation series the follow-up to the 72 XTs to arrive with an Intel Core still but then raise the game towards an i7 or i9 12th gen right now is simply incredible and fair play to them by sticking by their guns on this system. But it ain't just about that processor, it's what that processor brings to the table. And the one thing that it brings more than anything else, because yes, there's some nice CPU power in there to clock speed and integrate, integrated graphics. But what it also brings is PCIe Gen 4 architecture. Now, PCIe Gen 4 architecture is, in the world of NAS, incredibly thin on the ground, with most NAS systems these days arriving with Gen 3. A PCIe Gen 3 lane gives you a bandwidth of about 1,000 megabytes per second. And then when you see, like, PCIe Gen 3 times 2 times 4, it is simply PCIe times that number. So Gen 3 times 1, for example, is 1,000. Gen 3 times 2 is 2,000, so on and so forth. Gen 4, on the other hand, is 2 thousand megs bandwidth on each of those lanes and once you add the multiplier this system that has a gen 4 times 4 m2 nvme slot inside it has each of those ssd bays the two of them have 8000 megs of bandwidth to play with and it supports ssds the, the wd black sn850 and the seagate fire cuda f, f um 530 the samsung 980 pro these are ssds that can crank out 7000 megabytes per second and a lot of them these days with write speed as well well into the 6000s what i'm saying is this system thanks to that pco gen 4 um, architecture means although you've got a bunch of hard drives in sata you've also got two ssd lanes in there that can crank out six to seven thousand megs each and you can raid them together but it doesn't just stop there because that pcie gen 4 architecture is also bestowed on the pcie lanes with the main pcie lane on this and there's two available but the main one is gen 4 times 16 that's 32 thousand megabytes per second of bandwidth or 32 gigabytes and 
that um, those lanes there can be occupied by a PCIe cards for 10 GBE, 25 GBE, 40 GBE, 100 GBE. But on top of that, you can use the Kinep QM2 cards, which are multi-slotted um, M2 NVMe cards or Gen 4 to give you more of those slots. There's even 10G and Gen 4 M2 NVMe combo cards for two 10G ports and two PCIe Gen 4 SSDs on one card inside that slot. That's insane. And therefore, the PCIe Gen 4 architecture of this, I would argue even slightly more than that CPU, makes this system just unparalleled right now. Zettabyte file system, ZFS on this system, or EXT4 if you choose, is another way in which this system sets itself apart significantly from a number of other NASs out there. Not just with other QNAPs, but other NASs as well. ZFS provides so many benefits in the form of faster and um, um, lower resource intensive RAID configurations. RAID rebuilds are faster. Um, you've also got triple parity support on there. Lower uh, system impact snapshot creation there. Indeed, this system, oh, and RAID resilvering, of course, let's not overlook that. ZFS on this system improves performance significantly because you're even removing the volume layer, writing and reading directly from the storage pool. Now, ZFS has always, well, at least until recently, been largely associated with TrueNAS, the open source NAS server platform that's free to own, but you've got to buy all of the hardware yourself and put it together. But the ZFS software on this provides not only all of the features and services that are inherent to ZFS, but also all of the applications, usability, um, GUI, um, user interface, and applications and services and more of the Linux QTS platform, hence QUTS, a ZFS-powered and multi-GUI app-featured service platform on here it's got all the benefits of zfs and all the benefits of a commercial nas linux platform all rolled into one it's just insane how much this can do and if true nas has always interested you because it has zfs but it's higher learning curve it's custom build and non-turnkey quality outside of ix systems of course um has always intimidated you this is a great way to have insane hardware and insane software and insane features all in one this next point has just become more of a relevant subject in the last couple of years and that's to do with compatibility and support with more nas brands becoming a little bit more walled up in their compatibility and support of third-party hardware and third-party peripherals as they roll out their own um, upgrades and own software and own hardware services and stuff this system still has a tremendously broad support of third-party services third-party applications and third-party hardware yes QNAP have got their own branded uh, QNAP memory they've got their own QM2 and network upgrade cards they've got their own I mean, Mustang AI supported card they get their own first party all the rest of it but they also support all of the third-party hard drive brands out there, up to 22TB at the time of recording from WD and Seagate and the like. They, although they have their own PCIe upgrade cards, they also provide support of Intel, Mellanex and more, USB peripherals, just all of it, it maintains an open third-party support. And the same thing goes for its software as well, with a number of its software services supporting the likes of um, more cloud services as well, not just integrating towards their own cloud service, which they don't have, but a broader degree of support for those third-party apps as well. Something I think needs to be really focused on in 2022 and 2023, because right now we're seeing more and more NAS brands get decidedly more proprietary than some of us would like. Now this last one, I am sure a number of you might even be quite surprised about me saying this, but I do consider the software side of things on this a plus. And that I know there have been slight rumblings from people out there, even now in 2022, 2023, towards the end, about that issue of ransomware and deadbolt and uh, ransomware attacks on the QNAP platform. They were not the only ones that were targeted, remember. And a lot of the times when people were targeted by ransomware, it was because of ill setups and network um, holes in the setup. That wasn't all of it. And there was definitely some blame to be had on all the brands, including QNAP themselves. But I think a lot of the time, 
because of what happened in um, Deadbolt and the ransomware attacks, people are overlooking in some cases the software platform from QNAP, the fact that QTS and QUTS are still really good platforms, notwithstanding that the AI program QMaggie still provides more features and services than any other AI photo recognition NAS software to date. The fact that full volume encryption, Paul encryption, I should say, uh, depending on EXT4 and ZFS, is still available on QNAP when Synology have yet to roll it out. The same goes with right once read many. It's there. Their hybrid mount application supports all of the cloud platforms out there to bolt on cloud storage, unlike Synology's, which limits you to only their own Synology C2 cloud. Um, the fact their VM tools are more extensive. You can download VMs directly from the app itself, and that goes from PFSense to Zabbix and all the way up to Ubuntu and Windows from Windows 7 to 11. Um, the AI supported NVR services on this are not restricted to only using um, a special DVA NAS like Synology where they've got AI supported services for facial recognition, license plate recognition and more, but only restricting it to three NASs. QNAP allows you to use native hardware to do it or stick in a graphics card or stick in an M2 ITPU Google card. It supports that third party add-on. Then you've got multimedia console, something that no other brand provides. There's, there are things in the QNAP software portfolio that I think are being smudged over because of things like Deadbolt. And yes, Deadbolt was terrible. And yes, it was not on how a lot of the brands reacted to it, QNAP included. They could have been a bit snappier about it. But at the same time, I think that is often clouding what is overall still a fantastically detailed platform, particularly when you bring into the fact ZFS support and heightened security services being brought into it as well. However, some of you, it's not going to be enough. And the five points I have raised are not going to be enough for you to jump the gate and go for a NAS like this. And of course, there are five reasons still to go through why you might not want to go for this system. The confusing config. Now, I have worked in IT uh, on and off for about 20 years, give or take, in one shape or form, and data storage for at least the last decade and more. And I've got to tell you right now that the 4, 6, and 8 bay of this device and the number of configurations it comes in confuse the hell out of me. So what chance does a non-data storage IT nerd stand, you know? Because... This system arrives with, um, or well, the 4, 6, and 8 base system arrives with either a Pentium, an i3, an i5, an i7, and an i9. However, each one of those arrives with different variable memory amounts, and each one of those CPUs has a different layered support of PCIe lane. So although this system arrives with uh, PCIe Gen 4 times 16 on the main slot and Gen 4 times 4 on the M2 NVMEs, the 4 bay only has one of those. Uh, uh, only has PCIe Gen 4 on the main slot, not the M2s. The 6 bay, on the other hand, has one of the other. The i9 version of this arrives with 64 gig of memory and two 10 GBE ports, but none of the others do. And it's incredibly confusing to narrow down not only where you're spending your money and your budget, but also that you get hold of a system and not feel that you've been promised something that isn't available on that configuration yes go straight to the i9 you get everything but the i9 is the most expensive and maybe you don't need all of that but it's not really relayed hugely well which one of them has the precise configuration without having to pour over specification sheets and compare them side by side too damn much and i think the messaging for the configurations on this is too complex they should have had one version of each or, at the very least, had the standard 8 bay with an i7 or that i9 by default because people would rather have paid the extra 3 to 500 nicker to have all the extra bells and whistles. Next up, for all of the nice things I said about the software, it's worth highlighting one of the things about the software on this that really knocks me off, and that is QVR Elite. Now, QVR Pro, I've used several times on the channel. I've done overviews. I really like it, and I like that there are facial recognition and AI-supported services rolled in with QNAP's uh, QVR services, like Face and T Face Tiger and whatever it calls itself. Um, but at the same time, when it comes to the QUTS platform and still taking advantage of those AI-supported services, I think a lot of the messaging, again, is a bit garbled. First and foremost, QVR Elite, despite its Elite moniker, which is better than Pro, right? Um, QVR Elite, although it utilizes less system resources, which is good, it only has two camera licenses. And there's a kind of weird policy on the subscription costs of those licenses as well. Whereas 
A normal NAS, the TS464 for example, has eight camera licenses in QVR Pro. So this system, which is more powerful than that one, is using the more efficient and less resource hungry software with fewer camera licenses, which is really annoying. And I don't like this garbled messing. Same thing goes with the AI supported services with facial recognition, they have licenses attached to them and there's just the whole thing is very messed up in terms of the dialogue there and i think this system is going to suffer slight confusion at the point of sale because of that garbled messaging there and i think things could stand to be a lot clearer about it i've already touched on this but i want to drill down into it the lack of 10 gbe on all but the i9 version of this really hacks me off because although i get it 10 gbe if you added 10 gbe to the 4 to 6 and the 8 bay model it would increase the price of all of them like an, at one or 200 nicker i think people would prefer that because the idea of going out and buying an additional car particularly if that card occupies one of those wonderful wonderful gen 4 slots that's such a waste this has got two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports there which is lovely to see at least it's not one gbe but the fact it doesn't have 10 GB by default when the 872 XT, the 872 and X, and even the 872 N that came five year, four to five years before had a 10 or 5 GB port onto the main board. You weren't taking up the PCIe slot to have that connection there. And it really winds me up that this system, which has got eight bays of storage, even the four bay, which has got four SATA bays, and it's got two Gen 4 M2 NVMe bays inside. I have to go out of my way to buy a 10 GBE card, one or two port. That's not on. And the i9, the, the, no one can tell me that the i9 is the only one that should arrive with two 10 GBE ports. This system here, even if it had the i3, could fully saturate two 10 G ports easily. Yes, it would increase the cost, but I think people would prefer a native 10 GBE port on the rear rather than have to go out and buy another one and take up those slots on board. And this last point you might have already guessed for yourself given that I brushed against this a few times. This is not the quite quietest NAS in the world. Notwithstanding, it is metal all the way around. The system has four individual rear fans, two large fans here, one extra fan putting air over the main CPU and the M2 bays, and also there on the side, another um, slot there, uh, another fan there for that 350 watt PSU. On top of that, if you use drives that are larger than 10 TB, they're going to hum more because they're um, just having more platters inside thanks to their helium technology. And more platters, higher uh, RPMs at 7200 RPM, result in this system being noisy. And if you are looking at it for your 4K or 8K editing in your suite for your post production, you can't be in close proximity to it because you're just going to notice the noise too much. You don't have to be that noise sensitive. It's not like noisy like I dropped it down the stairs. It's just noisy in a way where when you are interacting with it, even the smallest thing with the hard drives and the fans, you're going to hear it. And I think a lot of you that connect with it interface to interface, 10 to 10, even using lower end switches, unless you are in a different room, the noise of this thing is going to hack you off. So do bear that in mind and if you are really really noise sensitive much like the 82 series much like the 72 series that came before this noise is a question mark it has to be metal i get it heat dissipation when you reach this scale of storage you have to think about airflow as well it's an unavoidable consequence so i can't really critique them for it it's just something i think you need to be aware of before going for a device like this but this has been five reasons to go for the new um h874 from qnap and five reasons why you might want to give it a miss there's a full review link below as well as my i believe it was again about an hour long full review of this device where we really drill down into the hardware and software so i recommend you check that out but otherwise thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video like if you have enjoyed it subscribe to learn more use the free advice section and ask nas compares the free advice community forum manned by me eddie and other members of the nas community to help you out with your data storage queries and if this video has helped you and if you were going to buy from amazon anyway please use the links in the description to take you there it won't cost you anything extra and anything and i really do mean anything you buy once you go go to amazon from that link results in a kickback here to nas compares because we're amazon associates and therefore it allows me and eddie to continue 
doing what we do. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.